bring it back to your family. Uh, and so, what? I mean, the chances of you guys being touched by, like I said, maybe not, because that's not the way that God's going to call you. But uh, how can you apply that to something like that? Like, uh, you know, I, I think just camping. You know, you take your who, who likes to go camping with their family with the dad. It's awesome, right? But a lot of bad things can happen when you're camping, right? Because you, you're so used to like living in your house, and if you break your arm in your backyard, right? Like. You just go to the hospital it's right down the street and like the best person has spent 20 years you know uh of their whole life dedicated to fixing broken arms for kids that fell in their backyard is waiting for you essentially uh and you're good but what happens if you drive to picacho and you're five hours away and there's nobody within 20 miles from you awesome place to camp right what happens if you break your arm out there not not the guy waiting for you to like you know fix your arm immediately so your dad uh, has a plan for that right uh, what are the worst things that can happen? Um, and so, and then, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen, but he's, he knows what to look for. So he's like, well, how would, a, how would a person break their arm? Because they climbed up something stupid, they shouldn't have been, and then they fell and that, right? But you also want your have kids to have fun, you gotta balance a lot of these things. Because then what you bring back from that experience, assuming that you go out there and do it safely was, hey, now my son or daughter knows how to start a fire, they know what it's like to live, sleep in a conic box, because I guarantee you tonight, what are you gonna be thinking about when you crawl into your nice warm bed? That Connex box, right? You're like, gosh, that was uncomfortable and this bed is so comfortable, right? So now you're gonna respect the things you have. There's so many good things about going out into a situation out there where there's a little bit of danger um, that you never would have got of, you never would have gotten if you stayed inside of this safe harbor in your house or, you know, whatever. Uh, and so and so that that's that's one story um, from being a test pilot. Um, Kind of back to what I was talking about earlier, um, you know, on, on, the, on the subject of how do you uh, know what what you're supposed to do? Um, you're going to hear a lot of people tell you that you should do things that may sound interesting. You're also going to tell you that when you maybe start to come up with an idea, I'll tell you another story uh, of what you want to do with your life. You're going to have people potentially that have your best interest in mind that don't hear the same calling that you are, that are gonna try to dissuade you potentially uh, from doing what, what you're called to be done. So first of all, who's heard of the word vocation? Anybody know what that word is? Vocation? Nothing? Okay, well you guys can look it up when you get back. Vocation is a word, it, it's people are like, oh, what's your vocation? And, and generally speaking, when you're an adult, it's like your job, right? But vocation means something a little bit more. It means something that you're called to do. Uh, and uh, for me, like I said, I've always been interested in flying. I like uh, computers, talk about drones, taking things apart, uh, understanding why things are the way they are. So that combina combining with airplanes kind of drove me in that direction. But uh, like somebody was talking about earlier, um, you know, uh, being a pilot is something that I may not genetically be configured to do. Um, so uh, when I am, 15, I'm 6'4", maybe, uh, and, uh, you know, I tell my dad, who's 6'10", uh, oh, by the way, my vision at the time is 2400, so you guys ever been to an eye chart, you guys can read, like, E, R, S, T, L, N, E, or whatever, I knew the first letter was E, because they're all E, past that, no idea, couldn't see it, uh, that's how good my eyes were, terrible, right, and this is in 1995, no laser surgery doesn't exist. Uh, not approved for flying. And uh, well, my dad was six. Took me to Top Gun. Uh, watched that movie. Right then and there, I knew I'd be a fighter pilot, fly jets off ships. Uh, and I, I go to my dad. And this is hard for me to tell you this because I don't ever want my dad to feel bad about what he told me because it was in it was in the goodness of his heart. He said, Rob. Uh, you're 6'5", you can't, you're blind as a bat, and you're left-handed, which he thought, and I, normal people think that, you know, uh, being left-handed has something to do with flying because the stick is either the center or on the right, and you fly with the right hand, you're not left-handed, it'd be like riding cursive with your not good hand, right? So you're, you're, you're too tall, you can't see, uh, and, and you're, and you're left-handed. Uh, are you sure this is what you wanna do? Because as a dad, he will, he'll tell you that you see your son 
going for something that you in his in his heart truly believe that was impossible and some things in the world are impossible because god has put immovable barriers uh for his reasons uh in front of us uh and my dad that thought he saw that and he was trying to protect me from just the pain of rejecting smashing myself against a wall that would never move and he said gosh man you know um i don't know my dad has always been abob is what we call him in our family he's always been my biggest fan and uh he was trying to protect me from smashing myself against that wall, and he said, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that's going to work. Um, and so for me, the, the one voice in my life who I've trusted more than anything, my dad, um, wasn't so sure <laughs> uh, because, of, because of those reasons, right? Um, and so if there was ever a reason to not listen to your calling to your what you want to be your vocation or what god has in store for you that was it right and there's going to be a lot of those for that so it's it's, it's not if it wasn't hard enough that you it's not really easy to hear because the, the world is so noisy there's going to be people actively telling you that you shouldn't do that or you couldn't do that because you're not cut out for that there's going to be a lot of people, people that may you even trust a lot, that have your best interest when they're telling you that, they're going to say that you can't do that, okay? Uh, additionally, even if it is the thing that you want to try to do, it's, it's, uh, that, what you're, that you're meant to do, that God is calling you to do, uh, it's going to be so hard at times that uh, you're going to want to quit. And it's almost going to, it's going to be so painful sometimes that uh, you're going to be like, surely... I wasn't called to do this because look at all of the stuff that I have to do, all these hurdles that I have to get over um, to get here. Um, and so you yourself are going to be providing your own reasons of why you should quit. And that's why rarely do you see someone who's done something of note um, that hasn't gone through an incredible amount, of, overcome an incredible amount of obstacles. And we'll talk about this a little bit more. But anytime you find somebody or meet somebody or hear about somebody on TV, in real life, uh, that uh, are in the news, that's done something amazing, I guarantee you, they've had to suffer something as uh, amazingly as bad as that thing is that they've done that's amazing. Um, and I'll, I'll give you some just smaller examples uh, from my life uh, in a minute. Um, yeah, so it's funny, I, I think last night I forgot who said it. Uh, you know, how, how my path to become whatever it is uh, that I've accomplished, like, uh, what, what were the things that happened um, along, my, along, my, along my way that, that maybe kept me going or something like that? I think said, uh, somebody said it last night, uh, Proverbs is 16.9, in their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord uh, establishes uh, their steps. Which, it was funny that I heard that because that one I just found last night, right? I, I don't probably uh, read the Bible as much as I should. Uh, we're not really actively in the study group, um, but you said it, right? Where can you find, you know, these navigation points? And the Bible is a very good place to do that, right? And so the way that you think it's going to happen, it's not going to happen that way. Um, and it's going to be way more painful than it should or that you think it should. Uh, and you're going to have every reason to quit uh, along the way if you're trying to do something exceptional with your life. And... Uh, people are going to tell you, both people that you shouldn't trust and people that you should trust, that you can't do it. Um, um, and uh, it, it's, it's just going to continue. And it still is going to, it still continues for all of us today. Uh, 2 Corinthians, right? Paul's letter to Corinthians, second one, uh, chapter 4, 8 to 9. Um, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. And it will happen um, continuously. So one of the ways that you can know that you are on the right path, the path that God has for you, is that you feel that no matter what anybody says, to include the people you trust most in the world, you believe that that's what you need to be doing. Okay? Um, you're going to you're gonna think, hey, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do this. You start down one path, it's going to get hard. And you're going to be like, you know what? This isn't for me. Uh, I'm gonna go a different direction and the question is is like is it is it just because it's too hard? I should keep pushing 
um, or is it because this is actually isn't the right path? And to say that I knew exactly what path I was supposed to go the whole time, I'm here to tell you brothers, like I've gone up, hit a wall, stop, go this way, up, hit a wall, stop, go this way, up, hit a wall, stop, go that way, over and over and over again. Um, um, none of it has been through a lack of effort. So uh, Mr. Jim ta talked about um, college basketball, which I'm a big fan of. Um, Tripp's grandfather, my dad, who I was talking about earlier, was a professional basketball player. Uh, he played basketball in college for Kentucky. Uh, they went to the national championship in 1975, and then he got drafted by the New Jersey Nets, um, and then played uh, for the Nets for a little bit, and then overseas at football club Barcelona. If you guys are soccer fans, probably a little bit more familiar with that club, uh, but they have a basketball team. Uh, played for the European Cup three times, and then hurt his back, and married my mom, and then ended up going to dental school, and then medical school, so kind of a role model, uh, and then moved us out to Phoenix, right? And so basketball is a part of our family, um, and, and we enjoy it, and I enjoyed it uh, very, very much. Uh, and so here you are, a kid who is 6'4 at 15, his dad is a former pro, pro basketball player, and likes basketball, turns out not good at it, <laughs> at all, I wasn't. Uh, my younger brother, uh, Kevin, uh, pro baseball player, uh, later on, not when he was very little, but uh, very athletic. Uh, me, not as athletic as my brother, not nearly as athletic as my dad, love basketball. Go to high school, which is where some of you guys are going to, right? <coughs> Playing basketball in junior high, doing okay. Uh, freshman year basketball tryouts, uh, cut from the team. Um, Difficult, difficult time because I, I love basketball. I was kind of, you know, in your age, you kind of don't really know what you want to do. So maybe I'm going to be just like my dad, which I'm telling you is probably not going to happen for you because it didn't happen for me. Uh, but I was like, well, I saw my dad be happy in this. Maybe I should try to do basketball and I'm going to try to be a basketball player. Uh, cut from the basketball team. Coach comes to me and says, uh, you, you're not on the team. Uh, we need somebody to film the games. <laughs> so be the camera boy, right? Um, and you guys can imagine, especially you guys who are in high school, what that's like. Uh, you can be the camera boy, but you can practice with us, okay? So you can practice with the team. You don't get your own number. You don't get your own jersey. You can't travel with the team on the bus, but you can get your parents to drive you, uh, and you can participate in that way, right? Uh, and so I thought that that was what God wanted me to do to play basketball. I really enjoyed it, uh, but gosh, is that embarrassing, you know? Being the camera boy. And right in, in high school, freshman year, I don't think any of you guys in this room, in this group will be like that, but uh, you know, young men can be tough on each other. Um, and uh, and it wasn't any different for me. And so I was the camera boy. I had a number at a jersey that I practiced with. It was the jersey of another guy. Um, but it, it was embarrassing. I got teased. Uh, practice was tough, because quite honestly, they were better than me. Um, a lot, 